Hi, I'm Joe Manganello, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Welcome to the Broadway.com show, your weekly roundup of everything Broadway, or as we like to think of it, Jinx Monsoon for Broadway campaign headquarters. Let's kick it off with the news. What's the buzz, Lindsay? Andy Carl is officially heading back to Broadway, and there's only one thing to say. Yo, Adrian! That's right, the mystery of Edwin Drood and Legally Blonde favorite is stepping into the Broadway ring in the new musical adaptation of Rocky, playing the Italian stallion, Rocky Balboa. Broadway newcomer Margot Siebert will join Carl as Rocky's mousy but supportive girlfriend Adrian at the Winter Garden Theater beginning February 11th, 2014. Until then, if you need us, we'll be blasting Eye of the Tiger on repeat, running up and down the stairs, and punching stuff to get ready. NYC is saying so long to its favorite redheaded orphan. The Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winning revival of Annie will play its final performance at the Palace Theater on January 5th, 2014. The production features young actresses Tara Richardson and Sadie Sink alternating the title role and theater greats Faith Prince and Anthony Warlow as Miss Hannigan and Daddy Warbucks. If you haven't seen Warlow and Prince in action, hurry up, your time's running out! Fresh off his smash musical success with Kinky Boots, Tony winner Harvey Firestein is readying his first new Broadway play in almost 30 years. And don't worry, there's plenty of drag in it. Casa Valentina is set in the Catskill Mountains in the 1960s and centers on a group of white-collar, heterosexual men who cross-dress on the weekends. No cast has been set for the show, which will be directed by Joe Mantello and premiere in April. Guys, if you need any help with auditioning process, there are a few of us here at Broadway.com who are more than happy to help. For the first time since winning a Tony for Aida, Heather Headley is coming back to Broadway. The Golden Voice Grammy winner is joining operatic pop group Il Devo at the Marquee Theatre for six performances from November 7th through the 13th. The concert, called A Musical Affair, The Greatest Songs of Broadway, will feature songs from such classics as Phantom, Carousel, and West Side Story. Il Devo, which was formed by American Idol Mini Simon Cowell, is also releasing an album in early November featuring Barbra Streisand, Kristen Chenoweth, and more. Musical theater heaven. The rumors are true. Cabaret is officially coming back to Broadway in 2014, led by Tony winner Alan Cumming as the MC and three-time Oscar nominee Michelle Williams as the famous Sally Bowles. The entire 1998 Tony winning production will return to Studio 54 next spring, with Williams making her Broadway debut and Cumming reprising the role that won him Broadway's biggest prize. We can't wait to step into the cabaret once more. Maybe this time, we'll buy merch. Hi, I'm Danny Burstein, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. In last week's Smackdown, we asked which Broadway leading lady you couldn't wait to see in a TV guest spot, Laura Osnes on Elementary or Sutton Foster on Psych. Cinderella star Osnes, who has never appeared on TV, got fans excited and drew 61% of the vote. This week, we're inspired by the news that Britain's greatest stage stars will gather on November 2nd to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the National Theatre. Two Tony-winning leading ladies are set to headline the event, which will be broadcast live around the world. So here's an impossible smackdown. Who is the greatest of the great dames? Judy Dench or Maggie Smith? Tweet your vote to Broadwaycom with the hashtag BWaySmackdown and tune in next week for the winner. Saturday Night Live is back with its 39th season this fall with stars like Miley Cyrus, Bruce Willis, and Tina Fey announced as hosts. Yep, not a Broadway name in the bunch. Hey Lorne Michaels, how about considering some of Broadway's household names? We know this week's High Five would make perfect picks for hosts. At number five is Sutton Foster, the Broadway prodigy who can do it all. Sing, dance, act, and deliver an opening night monologue that combines all three. Number four is Patti LuPone, a perennial theater favorite who has equal parts comedic timing, stage pedigree, and all around perfect host potential. Number three is the incomparable Harvey Firestein, who's long overdue for a hosting slot on SNL, even if his celebrity impressions all sound the same. Coming in at number two is Kristen Chenoweth, a little ball of giant talent who can morph into a zillion different characters on SNL, all of whom can sing opera. And number one is Homeland teddy bear Mandy Patinkin, a Tony-winning stage vet who could tear up the stage at Studio 8H and look like an adorable grandpa while doing so. So how bad at SNL? A little less Miley, a little more Mandy? The power's in your hands. Bobby Steger is having one heck of a week. Not only did his new Broadway musical Big Fish start at the Neil Simon Theatre, but the Tony nominee also quietly revealed he's gay in an interview with Out Magazine. 
Naturally, the story was quickly picked up by a certain notorious gossip blogger. This week, Stegert tweeted, You know you've made it when Perez Hilton congratulates you for being a homo. Smiley emoticon. Personally, I'd like to congratulate Bobby on being 32 and still looking like the fresh-faced high schooler who told us he was voted most likely to be on Broadway. What's your secret? It's moisturizer, isn't it? You can follow Bobby at B Steggert. Spider-Man star Reeve Carney swung by the Music Box Theater this week to see his old pal, Spider-Man alum Matthew James Thomas, in the Tony-winning revival of Pippin. After the show, the two Peter Parkers spent some time hanging out on stage. Like, actually hanging out, as you can see in this awesome shot by Broadway.com photographer Bruce Glickus. Would you expect anything less from these two high-flying Broadway superheroes? Hello, I'm Tom Skerritt, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Thumbs up to Sondheim at the Multiplex. We were thrilled to find out that the hit West End production of Merrily We Roll Along will be broadcast at movie theaters around the U.S. on October 23rd. This is one of our favorite Sondheim shows, and Maria Friedman's production is nothing short of brilliant. Trust us, gather up your old friends, a bucket of popcorn, and a big pile of napkins, because they're gonna laugh, cry, and love it. This week's thumbs down should really go to Broadway.com's editors, who included the Phantom of the Opera in our weekend poll list of favorite Broadway teachers. We were sort of kidding, and then he won with a whopping 40% of the vote. On the merits, it makes sense. From his perch behind Christine's mirror, the Phantom molded her into an opera star. But this is a murderer, people. He should not be winning any popularity contests. Too bad there's not a Broadway musical about Glee's Mr. Shoe. This week, we find ourselves in complete awe of Laura Benanti. The Tony-winning star provided a fantastic cameo as the goddess in the limited engagement of Todd Allman's The Tempest in Central Park, and we truly cannot stop listening to her incredible new 54 Below album in constant search of the right kind of attention. Laura, congrats. You're our star of the week. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Broadway.com show. We leave you with a clip of departing Broadway superhero Reeve Carney, who will bounce off the walls one last time in Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark on September 15th. Thanks for all the high-flying fun, Reeve. You truly did rise above. See you next week. <laughs>